Why, hello there. Hello, hello, we are live. I am just getting organized here. So thank you so much for joining me. And I'm going to guess that some people are just gonna try to figure out where I am with the StreamYard stuff. Um, StreamYard is a third party um, program that I'm using to go live. Um, I'm learning it still. So um, you've probably seen me, if you've been watching, you've probably seen me use it already a couple of times. Um, but anyways, welcome, welcome. It's Wednesday night, 8 p.m. And um, I'm coming on live to, well, I wanted to come on live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. So this is, um, I think, week three. I did not do it last week. It was spring break, and I just uh, wanted to have my spring break, so I didn't, didn't, uh, didn't come on live. So if you're here, say hello. Um, because I'm using StreamYard, the comments will look a little differently. So I'm just, I'm also just curious if anybody um, is here. And if you're here, just to, just to comment um, so then I can make sure this is all working okay. Um, but tonight's topic is menopause. <laughs> How fun, right? So um, early menopause in particular, because that is something that I can speak to. Um, last summer, I was diagnosed with early menopause and early menopause just meaning that, you know, I'm, I'm in menopause at age 43. <laughs> when typically um, the average age for menopause is 51, 51, 52. So I'm definitely 10, almost 10 years early. So, but I wanted to share that journey of mine, um, partly because I think that it's so important to share information. Um, so often we don't get the information that we need, which is one of the reasons why I do pure romance in general is because of lack of information. And so um, just to be transparent in what I've been learning about menopause, so I wanted to share all that with you guys. Um, what else do I want to say before I dig into the nitty gritty of it all? I don't remember. Ha <laughs> ha, menopause. I keep saying menopause brain. I'm having menopause brain. One of the side effects of menopause is actually like brain fog and memory loss. Um, so it's just kind of my ongoing joke of that I can't pull words up as quick. Um, it's better. Uh, than it was last year, but um, but it, I definitely notice it. So anyways, I'm going to get going. I'm sure whatever I was going to say will pop up into my mind. Um, but if you are just joining or if you're not familiar with me, my name is Tara. I'm a pure romance consultant. I've been a pure romance consultant for eight years. And um, yeah, so I love just healthy sexuality and just women's health overall. So um, that is uh, yeah, just why I do what I do. So tonight, um, I wanted to just share my journey with you about menopause and um, just give you the information. So I will just kind of start from the beginning, I guess. Back two, two years ago, two summers ago, so summer of 2018, I was, I just turned 41. <laughs> and I missed my first period. I missed a period. I am somebody who... I never had kids, um, never wanted kids. So that that part uh, wasn't, um, I didn't have any grief around that. I mean, maybe a little bit, but um, but just to kind of give you, put into perspective. So I'm 41, just turned 41, and I missed my first period. It was like August, I think. August, I didn't get my period. Um, and of course, I'm not really thinking menopause. I'm thinking, oh shit, am I pregnant, right? Um, because I'm 41 and menstruating regularly, right? So missed my first period. Um, let's see. Then I got the next one. It was like it just skipped a month. It was totally fine. And then um, later that year in November, so like November, December timeframe, I missed another month. And um, I, I it came back the next month, so it was like no big deal. So I had my period regularly until April, and April, and now 2019, um, I did, I stopped my period. It was April. I remember it was being April, and I got my period. I was at a particular event and got my period. <laughs> I was at the Spring Fling for Women um, at the Alaska Airlines Center. If you're in Anchorage or know of uh, know of that, um, so I was. I remember getting my period that that weekend, super crampy, like uh, the whole bit, you know, getting your period, and I 
but then I never got, got it again. I didn't get it in May, June, July, all the way. And so I'm just like, I'm super also, I'm also really lazy as well about like going to get things checked out. So I made an appointment finally, um, in November of that year to go to Planned Parenthood. And um, so at this point, April, you know, May, June, July, August, September, October, it's like been six, seven months at this point. Um, and I don't have any other symptoms aside from like, I just stopped menstruating altogether. And it felt, if I remember right, it felt like I was getting my period every month, but like nothing was happening. It was like, I would still get, was still getting crampy and still like the whole bit. Um, I also, um, yeah, so I went to Planned Parenthood in particular because um, I I have I have health insurance, but it's not the best. And so, anyways, I just I always kind of go to Planned Parenthood. So I went to Planned Parenthood, and they said my first question was, "Am I in the perimenopause?" Um, and they flat out told me that I was too young to be in perimenopause, um, that there must be something else going on. So they did some blood work. Um, because there was a potential for um, a brain tumor, which is not like a super serious brain tumor, but basically like your brain isn't telling your body to do it the right thing, basically. And so they're like, well, it could be, a, and I don't remember if it was pituitary or something. I don't remember exactly. It's it's really, I should preface, I'm not a doctor. Like I, <laughs> this is just my experience. So um, maybe somebody who knows more about the healthcare will, would, remember, would know what this was. But um, so I did the blood work. And then they did, um, they gave me some medication that basically forced my, forced a period basically, um, that shed the lining because what they did say, and this was important, um, they said, if I wasn't shedding my, if my, if my body was meant, if I was ovulating, but my body wasn't shedding my uterine wall, then the buildup of that tissue basically could, could be cancerous as well in the uterus. So, um, so that was in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's shed the water, you know, in case it is, in case that is what's happening, let's do this. So I took the medication, which I don't remember what it was called, but I took the medication. I had a period like almost a week later, two weeks later, which was just like shedding. And then, um, and then I got my period, like a normal period. I, I'll, again, I was at some event and then I was on vacation in, in December. I went out of town last December and before my vacation was over, I had my period again. It was like, I left, I left town with like tampons in my bag. And then I was gone for 10 days and I had my, I got my period on like the last day we were there. And I was like, what in the hell is going on? Um, and I don't know. <laughs> I will say that Planned Parenthood told me to come back in six months to get rechecked. So that's really all I was at I was like, okay, have this medication to like force a period if I needed it. And then I'm supposed to go back to Planned Parenthood in six months. So, and I mean, I know that many of my friends, if some of you are probably watching, um, know, I, cause I was chatting about this. So like, I don't know what the hell is going on with my body. Um, then I got my period again in January. And then in February, it was like so light. It was like pretty much nothing. And then I think get my period again until, well, I haven't actually. So, um, I had my appointment for, I made an appointment for Planned Parenthood just, just this past May. So now we're in pandemic and like, um, you know, we're kind of caught up to somewhat of just last summer. And so I go to Planned Parenthood at this point. So I hadn't had my period now since like February again. Um, I went to Planned Parenthood um, and I'm, I do support Planned Parenthood. However, I was really unimpressed with their with how they handled this. So I went in and they didn't even know what I was there for. So I had my appointment, which I had made way back in November, or December. Um, and, um, oh, let me back up. So I did, I had to go to Planned Parenthood twice, November and December, um, because I wanted to make sure that um, the medication I took was okay. And then I'll also to get my blood results, my blood results came back. Like there was no cancer. There was no, nothing, no brain tumor or anything. Um, and they really still didn't have any explanation. They just, but they still said that I was too young for perimenopause. So when I went back to Planned Parenthood in May, um, they didn't know why I was there for. Um, I was also supposed to fast and I, I didn't remember that. I didn't write it down. Um, and then also here's the kicker. 
So because I don't have very good insurance, I was just making payments for those two visits, the one in November and December. Um, and as long as you're making payment, like I was like, I was making like $50 a month or something. And they refused to see me because I had a balance at Planned Parenthood, which I thought was really interesting, right? Because Planned Parenthood is like the, um, you know, it's like affordable, right? You're supposed to go there if you, if you are on a budget or whatever. So I thought it was really interesting. They refused to see me because I hadn't paid my bill. I had been, I had been paying regularly, um, but they, because I had a balance anyways, that's sort of a side note, but it was like, I was super irritated because one, they didn't know what I was there for, for two, I was supposed to fast. And I didn't remember that they probably should have called me and reminded me. And then for two, they refused to see me until I, unless I paid my balance, which at that point, I think I only owed like a hundred dollars, but I was like, it's the, it was the principle. So I walked out. Um, and I do have, um, a care, a healthcare provider at Avante in Anchorage. And I see her, um, I see her like case by case basically. And so I emailed her that day and I was like, this is what's going on. I have no idea. Can you please help me? Like Planned Parenthood is not, not being very helpful. And she was like, yes, come on in. So I saw her and she just said, you know, blood work, um, to check FSH which I forgot what it's called, something follicle hormone, something FSH. Um, basically your FSH is like, if you're um, menstruating regularly, like you should be like under 25. But if you're in menopause, it can be anywhere from like over 25 to like, I think 120. Mine came back as 60. <laughs> so she calls me like two days later and she's like, yep, you're in menopause. So for one, I took blood work to measure FSH. And then for two, she recommended having an ultrasound to check the uh, uterine wall, basically the lining to see where the lining was at. Um, and so I did both of those things and both, you know, came back. The, the lining was fine. Um, and then the FSH came back as I'm in menopause. So then it was a matter of following up. Um, and there was this sort of like, I will, will say like, there was this sort of like, oh my gosh, like I'm old now. <laughs> I'm, um, I remember explaining it like, and for those that have gone through this, maybe you can, um, uh, have something similar, but like, it felt like, okay, I'm at the peak of my life and now I'm kind of going on the downhill spiral. Right. So it's like, okay, here I am. And now I'm like, whoop. so I think there was like, in hindsight, there was, um, some grief maybe, but not more of just grief for my mortality. So to speak, or like this reminder of like, we're all mortal and like, we're all, you know, going to die at some point. And so it was, it was just really, it was eye opening nonetheless. But so, um, so anyways, but I wasn't having any symptoms aside from just my missed periods. Um, but what my doctor said, and I will give you my doctor's information as well um, at the end. But um, what she said was, you know, are you experiencing hot flashes? Are you experiencing, are you being forgetful? Are you, you know, and at that point, nothing, it was just my missed periods. Funny enough, like literally like two weeks later, I start getting hot flashes and I start getting like, I get, I was getting, experiencing anxiety for the first time. I was experiencing memory loss and I still do that. I still like, I can't think of the word, like it's not, it's not coming. Um, and the hot flashes, like, I, I remember asking her, like, what is a hot flash? Like, how do I know if I'm having a hot flash? Um, and she's like, you know, it's just this internal heat that kind of comes and goes almost like you're embarrassed. So if you've never experienced a hot flash, because I didn't know what it was, um, I just thought you just get hot all of a sudden, but it is like, it's almost like you're embarrassed. Like, um, you just, it's just this, this internal heat basically. And you just kind of get flushed and, um, and then it subsides may for me it was maybe a couple of minutes and that was it um or i remember sitting like sometimes it wasn't like it wasn't um how do i say it wasn't like i was sweating or anything it was just like i suddenly just got really warm so i would i would sit here at my desk actually and i would have like you know like a cover like this for example and i would have to take it off like oh my god i'm, I'm pretty warm i would take it off and then it, like before you know it i was cold partly cold because of what this is what nobody ever tells you is that you you get cold because you're sweating and so then the air like you get chilled right like you're cold you're you're sweaty but also cold at the same time ah, post you're like flash or whatever so anyways it's really interesting um how that all happens but 
so I started experiencing that like midsummer, um, probably mid June or so. Um, the interesting thing about the anxiety is that I wasn't sure, you know, is this because of menopause or is this because of COVID, right? We're, I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic and I'm like, all of us are kind of stressed out and have an anxiety over coronavirus. So, um, I do think it's from menopause, to be honest, um, cause I'm still kind of experiencing some of that once in a while. Um, it could be that I've always had that and it just kind of exacerbated because of um, going through menopause, but I don't know. Um, anyways, and then the other thing that I experienced was um, having night sweats um, because you're and hot flat. It's really like hot flash at night. So it's like you're laying in bed and you have hot flash, but you're sleeping, right? So you, you have these constant hot flashes and going on throughout the night. And so you don't realize it because you're sleeping. Um, and then just kind of waking up just completely soaked, like all wet. Um, and this happened to me a handful of times where I did get up and like just change my clothes because what I was wearing was like just so sweat drenched that it was it wasn't comfortable and it was cold, like it because you're so you're wet. Um, I have heard of people changing their sheets. I didn't have to go to that length. It was more just like my shirt and like uh, my my sweatpants, but not like the whole like sheet set. Um, that I, I didn't have to do that, but some people have. Um, luckily for me, so I only experienced this for maybe a month or so um, because because I had the results so quick. Um, I got on hormones almost right away. And so once I was on the hormones, um, all of that subsided. So I don't have any symptoms right now at all, um, ex with the exception of sometimes I can't think of the right word. Um, and sometimes I'm like, I can never, like, did I turn my stove off or not? I can't remember. Um, those kinds of things are still, but I don't have any hot flashes anymore. Everything's like, thank goodness. Um, and now I want to talk about the hormones because a lot, that was one question was like, do I take hormones? Do I not take hormones? Like I have no idea. Um, and so I will say for me, um, oh, one more thing I was going to say along with like having hot flashes at night or like night sweats is like, you don't sleep well. So, um, for, me, for a couple of weeks, it was like, I was just really tired all the time because, for one, you're having hot flashes during the day even, and then at night you're just not sleeping well because you're tossing and turning and you're hot and sweaty and having to get up and like maybe change your clothes or whatever. So um, that can be really sick, like it's just this combination. So I will say what I've learned was that every single person who has goes through this is, has a different experience. So I joined a couple of Facebook groups and I'm gonna put those Facebook groups, um, link them in the, th the thread of this in the comments of this video. Um, two that I found helpful. One, um, I actually, one of them I actually turned off because it's a lot of people, it's almost kind of complaining a little bit. Um, but, but in that group, that was the one that I joined first. In that group was where I realized not one single woman has the same experience. Not one single person has the same thing. So um, I learned a lot just by reading and, and seeing their comments. Um, and through that group is where I learned about the other group that I actually do still participate in and um, get a lot of their information. And she has a YouTube channel and everything. She said she's actually a nurse and I really appreciate that. So I will put both of those links in there. The one that I like is called, oh, I have it listed. Um, the one that I like is called Crack the Menopause Code and Camille Larson is her name. She has a YouTube channel called Embracing Hormones with Camille Larson. Um, she's fantastic. So um, anyways, back to the hormones. So I wasn't sure, do I take hormones or do I not? Um, and what is the difference? And like, how do you know? And so thankfully, my uh, my doctor um, was really, really helpful. And she kind of said there's there's synthetic hormones, which pe women have been taking for forever, which is just like a synthetic hormone is like no different than taking like a birth control pill, right? Um, it's just, it's a human made kind of thing. Um, the the hormones that are a little bit more common, I wouldn't say more common, um, more healthier. I don't know. There's really no re no rhyme or reason whether one is healthy or the other, but the one that she was recommending and one that I had actually read up a little bit about was bioidentical hormones. <clears throat> and that's actually what Camille Lawson suggests in her embracing hormones. She kind of breaks it down. The 
the synthetic hormones versus the bioidentical. What bioidentical hormones are is the estrogen that's um, found in nature. So it's like they've they've created the hormones for us to take that it's basically just a mimic of nature. So it's not like some, you know, something that's been created in a factory basically or in a lab. Um, and so actually I do have some notes. I wanna just make sure I, I do it all justice right here. So um, yeah, plant estrogens is mostly what it is. So it's bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And so I have been on that since last summer, June probably. Um, and part of the reason is because it's, it's actually not very healthy to go through menopause early um, because you're, 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 you're basically losing that 10 years. So for me, it was about 10 years. If you say, after, you know, I've probably been losing hormones since age 41. And when you naturally go through, through menopause at age 51 or 52, like that's 10 years of not having your natural estrogens um, being produced in your body. So that just basically puts puts me at a higher risk for osteoporosis and for heart disease, among other things. Um, but those are kind of the main two things. So, so my doctor had said, you know, typically if you're at age 51, you can kind of have a little bit more choice around it. But because I'm so young, she's like, it's strongly recommended, even like the, the national like menopause association ever rec recommends anybody going through early menopause to have hormone replacement therapy, at least until you get come to the age where you would, where it's average, like 51. Um, so basically I'm on hormone therapy, at least for the next eight years until um, I, you know, I guess I hit 51 and we'll go from there. Um, but there is, you know, there is a risk um, to take hormones as well. So other risks of, of taking these hormones, just like, just like you have risks of taking, um, birth control pills um, is that you have risks of taking when you take hormones too. So it's just kind of, you have to outweigh the risks and the benefits, almost like what we're in right now of like people taking a vaccine, right? A lot of people are outweighing, you know, it's, um, you know, the benefits of the vaccine are far, far out gray getting coronavirus, depending on your perspective. Um, so that's kind of the same thing. You kind of have to, I would never tell somebody that they should take hormones. That was just a good decision for me, but it's totally up to you. The, the risks, um, the most prominent risks of having uh, hormone replacement therapy is like blood clots and strokes, which is the same as, um, excuse me, the same as taking birth control pills. So um, with that, what I will say, my doctor in Anchorage is Bethany Buchanan at Avante Medical Center. Um, she is a, she's a, I think she's actually a nurse practitioner, um, but she has, um, a background in both integrative medicine and conventional medicine medicine. So she takes, she does take more of a holistic approach, but she has knowledge from both sides. And so, um, and she's really like a whole person therapy or whole person approach. So that's one reason why I love her. And she, um, we email back and forth. I don't have to check in all the time. We just, we can email back and forth and then I, I need to call, go back in in a year. So it's kind of like every year we're going to have, I'll have a face-to-face -face meeting with her to make sure. Um, also the, the medication that I'm taking, oh, I meant to grab it. The medication that I'm taking is a replacement for um, progesterone and estrogen. I don't think I have testosterone in there. So the three main would be estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Um, I don't think I have any testosterone. I think it's just estrogen and progesterone. In fact, I think there's three different strains of estrogen. So I'm, like I said, I'm not a doctor. But I take one pill at night, um, and then I have a patch that I have on um, uh, twice a week. I have to change it over um, two times a week. So those are mine. But there are all different kinds. And so um, there's some people take pellets. Some people take... Uh, other kinds of oral medications, like it's, I have no idea. So these two that she put me on um, have been working. Um, it can be tailored, but so far what I have, just the basic has been working. That doesn't mean that it won't change down the road. Um, I have experienced, um, I, I, I have like every month sort of this like feeling of getting my period, but I don't really have a period. I did bleed a couple of months, but there, there wasn't, um, I did check with my doctor and she uh, assured me that there was nothing wrong with that, that it wasn't like bad, so to speak. Um, so, but again, that could be perceived differently by different doctors. But anyways, um, that is 
that. The last thing I wanted to say was because I had all this, just checking my notes, because I had um, this ang anxiousness feeling, I started, um, it was recommended to me to have to take some magnesium um, as well as ashwagandha. So those are some two um, like natural things that you can take. In fact, Bethany, when I started taking mag magnesium, it wasn't necessarily by, Beth by Bethany, it was um, someone else. And uh, I asked her about it and she was like, that's the number one, like, you know, uh, supplement that I recommend for people. So there's, I, what I learned though, was that there's different kinds of magnesium. So magnesium is sort of like this natural, like kind of calming is people um, will take it post um, a workout as well, because it's good for your muscles. Um, so, but there's two different ones and this was one that was recommended to me called calm, a magnesium supplement. You've probably seen this maybe this is a little drink and, um, I, this is, it's quite tasty. Actually, I got this at Walgreens. <laughs> um, and it's, I actually take it at night sometimes just to kind of, especially if I'm having a lot of anxiousness. Um, but this one is also a laxative, <laughs> which I did not know. Um, and I definitely experienced what that, the side effects of taking too much of this. Um, so I, I now I don't take it quite as often, but a little bit at night is fine. But I, I think at the time, because I was so like feeling anxious, I was taking it probably two or three times a day. Um, and that was definitely too much um, of it. So once a day is probably all, I don't take it every day, but um, now, especially now because I'm like six months out, like it's definitely, I can, I know my body a little bit better now. Um, with working with all of the symptoms of menopause. So, but this is one. The other magnesium that I actually learned about from uh, Camille Lawson is magnesium glycinate, which I think you should be able to see it. See the word there, glycinate? Can you see it? Uh, it's like, it doesn't focus very well. Anyways, glycinate, G-L-Y-C-I-N-A-T-E. They do sell it at Natural Pantry. I order it from Pure. Um, but this one is, um, it's, it's to support musculoskeletal health and also neurocognitive and cardiometabolic. So this helps. This has been a little bit better to take on a daily basis for me. I, I take a couple in the morning. I think it tells me to take, oh, serving is one capsule. So I take one. Um, I had the one from, from, uh, natural pantry, I think was taking two anyways. So magnesium glycinate is another one that really helps just like with anxiety and keeping you calm. And then the last thing was the ashwagandha. So I got this ashwagandha at, at Costco actually. Um, however, I do take, this is uh, a damsel in defense supplement called upper hand immunity. Let me pull this back. It's an immunity blend that has ashwagandha in it. Um, and this actually has all of what I need. Um, oh, I'm, I'm seeing someone say, because I'm in, I'm in face, because I'm using StreamYard, I don't know who this is, but thanks for opening up to everyone and sharing your experience. I love that you're such a helper and share, send you good. Thank you, whoever that is. I appreciate it. Um, if you want me to know, if you want me to know who you are, you can authenticate in the com in the, in the description above, it'll say like authenticate your user. Um, you don't have to though. Um, so upper hand immunity is a nice blend that has ashwagandha. It has mu uh, mushrooms and vitamin C. So I take this one anyways, but sometimes if I'm feeling really anxious, I'll take extra ashwagandha, which is this one. Um, and I got this at Costco. Um, you can get ashwagandha also from like Banyan Botanicals is a really good, good source for, um, any Ayurvedic medications. So, um, so anyways, I take the ashwagandha and the magnesium for just kind of soothing the like anxiety aspect of it. And then the only, the last thing that I will say is this kind of comes into like the whole pure romance stuff is um, vaginal dryness. So um, I wasn't experiencing vaginal dryness at all. Like I didn't have anything like that. And then in fact, when I was take, started taking my um, hormone replacements, the, um, uh, I was actually having extra vaginal lubrication, so to speak, like it was, I mean, your, your, my hormones are kind of amped up a little bit. And so, um, but now it's interesting because now six months later, I am feeling a lot more dry, um, and not as much natural lubrication, um, on a, on a regular basis. You know, I have my days where it's a little bit more normal, but a lot of times, um, most, I would say probably most of the time I feel a little bit more dry. Um, and years and years ago, I will say that, um, 
this is this is not related. I'm not I'm, and I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole. I promise. But I had experienced um, candida in my uh, digestive system, so an overgrowth of yeast in my digest digestive system. So I had to go through like the a whole bunch of diet changes and. Um, with that, I had stopped taking my birth control pills, and because of all of that, my is like the, the the vaginal lining was really really thin, and it was really painful, like almost all the time. Um, and then I, I rebounded from that. Um, but now I sort of feel like now in this menopause phase um, or state, I should say, I can experience. I'm feeling that uh, again, not quite as strongly, but I'm like, oh, this kind of reminds me of that um, that time. So that's where lubrication comes in, right? As we get older, we definitely need um, a little bit of lubrication. So um, we have two different ones and I would actually recommend, well, two things. So if you're experiencing vaginal dryness, it's actually totally fine to use a lubrication on a regular basis. Um, not just intercourse, but I mean just like on a daily basis. So what we recommend is having a little bit of lubrication um, inside the vaginal wall, like while you're sleeping. Um, so at night, put a little bit in. It, I've noticed actually, especially at night, if I'm um, just laying there, I can, I can. You're just more aware, I suppose, of your vulva, and so it's like, oh, I'm just laying there, and I'm like, oh, it's actually kind of dry and itchy a little bit. Um, so I'll put a little bit of lubrication on, just a tiny little bit, just to, um, so it soothes. And then it also absorbs and it kind of can be really beneficial for your skin. So just like me is our, our the one that we usually have. The other one um, is actually a CPD lubricant, which is really beneficial, um, even more so for, for vaginal dryness and for menopause, um, which is, this is very a uh, boring bottle. <laughs> it just it's just the CBD lubricant. So you have CBD. So basically, you're getting all the health benefits of the CBD, which can help. Um, it brings um, it can help bring blood into uh, your vulva area and help with circulation. So um, so any of these water based, specifically water based lubricants, um, that are really helpful for menopause, um, whether that's perimenopause or postmenopause, or you're in the middle. So what I will say, okay, so. I'm in a 5% where I had um, early menopause. I'm age 43, typically not su supposed to have a full menopause until I'm 51. But I do know, because I've been chatting about this with people, um, many people in their 40s are experiencing symptoms of menopause. Um, Again, my experience is completely unique. And what I've learned is that every woman's experience is completely unique. Nobody is exactly the same. Um, but symptoms are very, very much the simil very similar in like hot flashes, memory loss, um, an increase of anxiety, maybe even an increase in depression. I haven't experienced depression, but I know that if people are prone to depression, it's really because it's kind of tied in with anxiety, tied in with anxiety and stuff. Um, but you can kind of keep an eye on symptoms. Um, and not know that it's per you're perfectly normal. This is this is what the body naturally does. Um, the other thing to kind of keep in mind is that um, to kind of go back to my Planned Parenthood story of like it's it's. I, I guess I'm just kind of irritated that they said you know you're way too young for perimenopause when I was actually in menopause, like it wasn't even pre-menopause. It was like, I was, my FSH came out at 60. So like, there's no way, there's no question. There was no question that I've, I've been experiencing, I had been experiencing menopause and like nobody knew. Um, uh, they usually say if you don't have a period for a solid straight year, then, then at that point you're post, you're in menopause. Um, but I definitely recommend just getting blood tests because that was really the easiest thing was like, okay, get the blood test for the F FSH and then um, the ultrasound, which the ultrasound wasn't a requirement. It was more like out of curiosity to see just to make sure. Um, and so at that point I was sort of like really wanting to know what was going on. So um, that was why I opted for that. So anyways, I probably am just uh, yammering on and um, this is probably too long, but um, I hope that's just helpful. Like I'm not, um, I'm not feeling bad or anything that I have that I am in menopause. Um, it's, it's interesting because um, I, because it's just because I'm young, I'm just like, wow, I didn't really think that that was possible, but it is possible. Um, and a, a lot of us who are in our forties are going to be going to be, or are experiencing some of these things already. So don't be afraid. I'm, I'm an open book. If you want to ever reach out to me, I get so many questions all the time about sex. Um, any question about menopause is totally fair game. So 
don't be like ashamed or scared to ask me questions because I'm happy to answer them. Um, and, and yeah, it's okay to get second opinions, I think, or like, yeah, if you need a doctor, let me know. There's, there are a lot of really good doctors out in the Anchorage area. Um, but I definitely, Beth, Bethany Buchanan was sort of my, I remember just saying, thank goodness for Bethany, because otherwise I would be dealing with Planned Parenthood and they still don't, they would still be telling me that I don't have, them not in menopause. You know, they'd be giving me this random medication that forces a period every month because they did actually, they did tell me to take it every month. They're like, this is a medic. Like I had a standing prescription for every month to shed my uterine while if I wasn't getting a period, they were just, you know, to go ahead and take it. Well, I, for all I know, I could have been taking that for years without even really knowing. So, um, so I'm really happy that I chose to say, okay, let's go with somebody or let me just get a second opinion and somebody who knows specifically, um, which you would think that Planned Parenthood would, but maybe, I guess, I don't know, whatever reason, <laughs> it is what it is at this point. So, but anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, I mean, please let me know. I'm happy to answer. Um, I appreciate you listening and um, uh, hopefully my story or the information that I've shared is helpful um, to you. If you're going through it, if you're experiencing it, or if you're just, you know, anticipating it down the road, um, it's, it's all, it's just good information. I think the more that, the more that we share and the more that we um, can support each other, the better, just, just, it's basic knowledge. And the other thing is because every person is different and there isn't a whole lot, like you would think in the year 2021, we would have, well, at that time, 2020, when I was experiencing it, but you would think that we would have greater like understanding and like ways to help people, <laughs> ways to help women in particular. Um, but we don't like, there's still like lots of misinformation, lots of unknowns, lots of, um, and, and, and it could just be because we all have a different experience or there, there maybe isn't a pattern. I don't know, but, um, people are, yeah, we just don't know. So the more we talk about it, the better. And that's with like so many topics that are around women's issues. I don't like issues, women's health, right. Whether that's just, uh, talking about our periods in general, right? Like we were having this conversation online about the the film, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, like to start getting our periods, you know? Um, and the, you know, on the flip side, here we are, like in my parties, I always talk about, how did you learn about sex? How did you get your, you know, what did you have a good, good sex talk, you know? And here I am, you know, in my forties experiencing menopause. And I was like, I had no idea what to expect or like anything. I did ask um, my mom actually, cause I was like, well, how much of this would be, um, hereditary or like what was her experience and she told me she didn't she didn't have she told me that she got her or went through menopause like in her 50s I don't remember the specific age um but her period just stopped as well she had zero symptoms and her period just stopped so I was like oh that actually lines up with my experience then so I would say ask your if you if you know your biological parent um reach out to them and see what they can tell you about their experience because it might very well be similar to or you can kind of anticipate um some of that but anyways i am probably just um yammering too much i again appreciate your time have a good night and again i'll be back next wednesday at eight o'clock for some other topic i don't know what it will be if you have a request let me know i'm happy to talk about anything um but until then i will i will uh see you have a great weekend bye